Hermann Ebbinghaus was a German psychologist who lived from 1850 to 1909. He is best known for his experiments on memory, which he conducted during two year-long periods. The first series of experiments was conducted between 1878 and 1879. The second set was conducted between 1883 and 1884. Ebbinghaus was the first person to develop an experimental approach to the study of memory, but what makes him even more interesting is the way that he conducted his experiments. When we think of experiments today, we imagine a lab where a few research assistants test tens of participants. However, Ebbinghaus didn't have a lab, or research assistants, or participants. He conducted all of his experiments in his home, by himself, and he used himself as his only subject. Even though he had only one participant, Ebbinghaus made discoveries that are still applicable today. That is because his experiments were conducted very carefully. In this video, I'm going to tell you about Ebbinghaus's experiments. Ebbinghaus was interested in the effect of repetition on memory, so he first needed something that he could repeat. He decided to use nonsense syllables. By nonsense, I mean that the syllable has no meaning. To give an example, a syllable like cat has a meaning, so Ebbinghaus would not have used it, whereas a syllable like cag has no meaning, so it could have been included. Ebbinghaus designed a set of 2,600 cards for his experiments. On each card, he printed a unique nonsense syllable. To create a series of syllables for a memory task, Ebbinghaus would draw cards at random from the deck. He didn't place these cards back into the deck until all of the syllables had been used once. Ebbinghaus also had a set of rules that remained constant for all of his experiments. First, when learning a series of syllables, Ebbinghaus did not allow himself to break it into chunks, and then recombine the chunks once he had learned them. The entire series had to be learned at once. Second. Ebbinghaus read the cards, and later recited the syllables, at a constant rate of 150 per minute. To measure the time, Ebbinghaus first used a metronome, but he later switched to a watch, since its ticking was less distracting. Third, Ebbinghaus read the words without any inflection. Because he knew it would be hard to talk in a monotone voice for a long period of time, Ebbinghaus allowed himself to place a slight inflection on either every third or every fourth syllable in a series, depending on the experiment. Fourth. After reading a series, he would take a break of 15 seconds to tabulate the results for that series. After his 15 second break, Ebbinghaus moved on to the next series of syllables. Fifth, Ebbinghaus tried to memorize the series as fast as possible. To do this, he dedicated himself to learning the series, avoiding any distractions. Sixth, Ebbinghaus avoided using any mnemonics in learning the syllables. He didn't attempt to create any associations between the syllables and real words or objects. He did this because he wanted to test the effect of repetition on memory not some other process. Finally, seventh, Ebbinghaus tried to control his life during the period of the experiments, so that all outside factors would be as constant as possible. He especially tried to keep his routine immediately before each test as similar as possible. If he felt that his routine had been disrupted, he would stop doing the tests until he could resume his normal life. He also tried to limit himself to one experiment per day, although sometimes he was forced to conduct more than one. Ebbinghaus dedicated over two years of his life to memory experiments. Each day, he would spend four hours memorizing nonsense syllables and testing himself. For some tests, he learned two 36-syllable series back-to-back. -back. To determine the effect of time on memory, he waited up to a month before testing himself on some series. Ebbinghaus published his results in 1885 in a book titled Memory, A Contribution to Experimental Psychology. If you'd like to read Ebbinghaus's book, it's available online at psychclassics.yorku.ca slash ebbinghaus slash index.htm. If you'd like to learn more about Ebbinghaus's life and his other research, here are some sites to check out. Thanks for watching.